All right, my brother. Thank you so much for coming. I hope your mic is positioned properly for you. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's, it's all good. It's all good for you. Yes, thank you. All right. All right, family, we want to welcome you again to another wonderful episode um, with my brother here who is seated with me. Um, Nathaniel, I think I was saying to him a few minutes ago that um, I've always thought he was Nigeria. Not until Tumisha Masha said to me he was not a Nigerian guy. <laughs> but welcome to Afro One Show, my Nigerian brother. Because I still believe you're Nigeria. I still believe. What are you like it or not? I still, I still believe that you're Nigeria. It's okay. And you can go back and tell the people that I this Nigerian guy who just believe you're Nigeria. It's okay. Oh, thanks, man. Well, but, 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 but I really appreciate you. I know that the drive may be very long, but it's okay. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, man. We do, we do, we do anything, you know, just to. Um, I suppose when Tumisha spoke to me and told me about you, um, I couldn't help but make it and. Do whatever effort that I need to make. No, I know to, you really to, to, to be here. So, so I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me, no, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, after one show, we just talk all things Africans as yeah, well as Africans. And like I said to you when we were coming, I always thought that you're Nigeria. Right. And for me, I think it was the the movie, the one you did, Rhythm City. Rhythm City. Where yes, you, you yes. played a character as a Nigeria. Yes. And there's this mob. There's this xenophobic attack that happened in the movie there. Yes. And I remember watching it years ago, and I was crying. I'm like, I imagine. Funny enough, it didn't register in my head that I was watching a movie right. for strange reason. I was like, okay, damn it. What's going on with these people? <laughs> but that's how much you really carry and you tell the story. Yeah. Before we begin into our talk, why do you choose the entertainment, the art industry for you to currently be there? Why? Uh, that's a brilliant question. Um, I don't, you know, I have, I have a theory. I don't think actors choose acting. Um, I think That's it's a calling. Yeah, I really, I believe it's a calling. Mm. And um, I believe I was chosen. It chose me. Okay. Um, I was at school. And in fact, growing up mm. all the time, we used to have these, there were these shows on TV, KTV, um, okay, yeah. Yo TV, Yo TV. The, mm. the kids presenting. And I always used to watch, and it like there was something inside of me. And the thing is, as a child, I was very shy. I was always shy and very quiet, and I didn't know I wanted to be an actor. Okay. But there was always something when I watched these shows that was calling me, saying, "Iman, come here." <laughs> <laughs> you it's know, like you're the hand doing like yeah, this. yeah, yeah. You know, there's like a little voice saying, "You belong here. You belong here." But I, I wasn't listening. Mm. And then finally, in high school, in grade eleven, I um, we did a performance in our English class. We had to take a poem and perform okay. it okay. Okay. As, a, as a project. And my teacher afterwards says to me, wow, you're quite a talented actor. And I don't know what it was about that comment, but it literally blew up my mind. Okay. It literally, for the first time in my life, I was good at something. That's mm. how I felt. Because mm. up until that point, yeah, I was playing sports, so I was doing this, so I was doing that, but I didn't feel... It, it 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 didn't affect me the way that that, that statement. comment mm. affected mm. me, and it made me audition for the high school play later that year, and when I was I, I got a part on that play, and I just remember you know that week that we were performing when I was on stage, mm. I just felt at home. Wow. Wow. I felt at peace. Everything made sense to me. The lights shining in my face. <laughs> you know, the costume that I was wearing, the lines that I was speaking, the audience watching me, yeah. the set, you know, having to interact with the set, the actors coming in from behind the stage, mm. onto the stage, going back. That, that, that whole experience for me, just, I was so comfortable in it. And that's, this is you at grade 11? This is me in grade 11. Wow. And I knew, I think from that point onwards, that this is what I want to do. And so you just because how did you manage to convince your parents? Because at that moment, I don't think that it's meant to have been a lucrative job for you to. <laughs> no, that's, that's not a doctor. That's not engineer. <laughs> what are you saying? What are you going to do for us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to to succeed. Um, fortunately, my my mother, um, who at the time because my my father passed away before. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear. Yes, um, thank you. But um. My mother was just, I've got the best mother. Wow. I've got the best mother, you know. Um, she, when I, when, I, when I told her I wanted to be an actor, she was just immediately understanding. Wow. Um, and she would be the one to tell me that, actually, in nursery school, they put you in a play and you were so great. So I think 
for her it made sense oh okay. because she had seen me as a child when i was really really small acting and i think already then people were commenting saying different kinds of things mm. and so when for me for her when i then as an adult when i was like i want to do this as a career mm. she was like okay i understand and i will do whatever it takes to support you i think that's interesting because mm. many of us i remember my own story as in when i wanted to enter entertainment it was, it was crazy mm. i like cracking jokes i said my father wanted me to be a doctor my mother wanted me to be an engineer so because mm -hmm. of that i studied science <laughs> of course i did science and after then by the time i finish uh, you guys call it matric here yeah? yes um we in nigeria we call it secondary school <laughs> right. so by the time i finish i'm like okay why the two of you are deciding let me go and figure out that by the time i come back and, and so for me it was it wasn't just an easy ride. Of course. I, I get that parental like, okay, dude. Because in my country that time, we call it a legalized prostituting business. Wow. Nigeria <laughs> <laughs> is hardcore, bruh. <laughs> wow. But the funny thing is, it's so big in Nigeria. No, it's and big. Remember those days? Oh. The, the money wasn't that much of a thing where it's it's like it's like it's like family who during i don't know about south africa it's like family who stopped their children from playing soccer yeah now you want your child to play soccer like brah yes from the day you were born i'm going to buy you a boot yes or imagine now parent now black parent now who wants their children to now play springbok exactly because obviously see how this year guy and stuff like okay Absolutely. from from school i'm going to make sure that you play this all of those so for mm. for me it was was that very particular constraint of but course. at a particular point in time because i didn't grow with them that much i'm always i call myself ajala travel ajala travel means somebody who always travel mm -hmm. so I, ajala travel so it was easy for me to when i find myself in lagos mm -hmm. i explore that very particular industry of entertainment industry and from that time till now wow. because long story short i've been there but for me as much as I get to find you, get to know you from your Redeem City days, mm. you'll permit me, because that's where I get to meet you, and I've always follow your trend. I'm mm. um, from that side. So anytime I see, I'm like, this Nigerian guy, this Nigerian <laughs> guy. I wanted to make sure bust my bubble. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> he's from me. Before we even get there, so that the um, viewers can get, where are you from? So that. <laughs> I am Ndimu Venda. I am Venda. Yane. Um, which we come from the north, the north part of the country. Uh, Limpopo, um, inside li the province of Limpopo, yeah, there's a there's a place called Venda. Okay. Um, which is close, more or less close to Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe border, Bait Bridge. Mm. On your way to Zim, you'd go, you, you you'd pass Venda, but I grew up mostly in Johannesburg. Oh, okay. um, I'm a Joburg boy, through and through. <laughs> Even the way I talk, you can hear. Um, and and yeah, that's where I grew up mostly. I'm, I'm tempted to ask you when you were playing that character as a Nigeria during the yes. how was it for you? I loved it. I loved it. How was the experience? Um, How did you embody it? What what was going through your mind for you to play a different nationality at that very particular point? I don't know. Maybe you visited Nigeria when you were playing that character. Maybe you no. visited a country before you embodied that character. How did you? You know, the funny thing is, and I think it's being uh, Movenda, is that we one of the smaller tribes in South Africa. I call you guys foreigners. You just you know. so you see. <laughs> <laughs> so so do you understand uh, for me now to transfer and be a foreigner it wasn't that difficult and yeah. i think because of that experience because of being venda no one spoke chivenda okay growing up so it meant that i had to learn all the other languages Sotu, isizulu um english whatever it was just to get by mm. so i think having that mindset or having that perspective of being an outsider mm. in your own country when it came to then performing or playing an outsider um it was easier it made it easier it oh, made okay. the experience i understood um a, 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 a lot of those dynamics about being excluded about coming from the outside having to fit in um i i i think also you know growing up i used to i was a quite a quiet a quiet shy person okay so i used to observe a lot of people you oh. know and again also having to learn other languages having to learn sisotu mm. having to learn already i think that created or th those muscles inside of my brain mm. to be able to capture or understand or you know um in what, 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 what do i want to say like get involved in another way of speaking, speaking yeah you know mm. so i think those things were already there so it made it you you said something that is quite interesting within the vendor community and i've i've i, I have met to me show i met a friend of my a pastor friend of my called Vugaraha masakona he's also a vendor guy yes um i think he's um his show we just had his show up this week also mm -hmm. and one of the things that is common with 
all your talk is this exclusion that you all experience yeah. how does that make you guys feel in your own country where you feel as if you're foreigners what 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 narratives were you guys just exposed to and how did you mm. fight it um you know i think as bavenda we we quite resilient people okay um in that sense so i mean of course um it doesn't feel nice to be excluded um and and coming to like a joburg it's a big city but yeah the the the, the dominant cultures in joburg were zulu and sotho okay um and as as venda people we're very proud okay very okay. very proud if you go back to venda you will see we we build big houses um the there's a lot of investment we even have our sort of tagline or our logline okay is shumeda venda you know is Shu say it again shumeda venda shumeda venda yes okay. which means work for venda oh, okay everything okay. you do so even if you're going to come to joburg work know for venda. that what, whatever you're doing in joburg is to then provide or give back wow. to, to 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 venda so there's always been that mentality within us that even though we were excluded or people didn't necessarily recognize mm, Mavenda mm, in the way that mm. we would have been would have liked to be recognized we felt proud we, we were proud of who we are proud of where we come from our culture um what we do that it didn't really affect us in a in a in a in a, in a big way in okay. our confidence the way we carried ourselves mm. we just accepted it as this is what it is for now okay you know this is how it is we are a smaller group of people um Zulus uh is the dominant culture mm. Sotho is the dominant culture and we adapted and if you find a lot of Chivenda speaking people mm. know Sotho they know Isi Zulu they speak all the other languages so is it because um, of your exclusions um the Venda exclusion I'm generalizing that enforces you guys to push yourself to be able to adapt with other languages so that you can fit into the business absolutely and it's become a strength for me Okay. Because now as an actor I am multilingual. Mm, mm. Um I speak different languages. I am more I, I adapt more. Like whatever you throw at me, I'm able to adapt, I'm able to take it on and it's become a strength. Okay. So yeah. within your industry when they when they find that okay, let me, I'm trying to paraphrase as using the vendor when they find out that you are a vendor guy. Mm. How do they accept you especially when you have to do maybe that production is predominantly zulu people how is it um it's it's i don't know it's 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 not bad um i think we just it's it's sort of part of what has is is going on right now you know mm. is that we are in south africa we are in joburg and i think being in joburg opens people up to a, lo a lot to other cultures and people coming from other areas mm. because all, all of us in joburg we are visitors you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, seriously. No, no, look, look at the camera and say it to people. They say it because they don't know. No, 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 tell them. Tell them. Tell them. No, but the truth is, in, all of us in Joburg, we are visitors. We come from somewhere. Over the time, yes, some of us have made it home. Mm. But in terms like of... Like me. <laughs> but, but originally, we are from somewhere else. You know, mm. we can't claim Joburg as our origin, necessarily. In so I think we, I think we should we should now begin to exclude Joburg from South Africa. They're like, okay, Joburg is a land of foreigners, like it's everyone of us. So absolutely. so this place should be free for everybody. It's when you find absolutely. yourself like in Venda or you find yourself like in Eastern Cape, then you're like, okay, ah, uh, baba. If they call it Kore Kore, accept it. <laughs> but in Joburg, again, we shouldn't be named those for lack of better or those linguas that yes. is that is not accepting and stuff. Within your industry, how how have you been able to be consistent? in getting to where you are and what were the red tapes you had to fight wow um discipline i think discipline is the one thing that's helped me to to stay focused mm. to 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 keep cuz yeah the industry is tough <laughs> and it's brutal and being a movenda you know it it means that I don't get chosen for most parts because most parts are Zulu speaking or Serious? Yes. If you look at the TV now, wow. all our shows are Zulu. 
most of 90% of the shows are Zulu. So if you are a non-Zulu speaking actor, mm. you you in a very tough place. Wow. And for me, fortunately, there's one vendor show that is on SABC2 Mubango. Mubango, yeah. I know yes. Mubango, and yeah. fortunately for me, that's what's kept me going for okay. the last four or five years. You're still, you're still in there now? I'm still there. I'm okay. still there. Okay. Um, so... So yeah, fortunately, that's that. There was that show that was for vendor speaking actors. If it wasn't for that show, to be honest, I don't know. Wow. But but. Um, but my question would have been now. Now that there's a statement you said, I just I forgot the statement where what you are building for built for vendor. Yes. Uh, what is stopping your people from coming together to create their own world in terms of? I, I, you permit me to ask the question. Yes. <laughs> but what is stopping your people because? As much as, yes, we have the Zulu, we have the Kosas, we have the Sutu, like you said, the Jobek is predominantly Zulu. Mm. You guys may be small, yes, I understand, but the last time I could check, I remember that is Tumisho, that is you. Mm. Obviously, there's still pocket of you guys also who are still in the industry from you guys coming to say, okay, fine. The market may not be available for us, but we need to do something. Yeah. Ish, my brother, you know, it's a, that's a brilliant question. Um... I, I am very collaborative okay. myself. Mm. Um, I'm always wanting to work. And I come from theater. Mm. I studied theater. Okay. Theater is extremely collaborative. Mm. There's mm. no one singular voice that dominates in theater. Okay. Everybody. We work together from rehearsals, actors. You know, um, even when I was studying, what was nice was that all of the years, you know, you don't get your first year that only stays first year, that second year that only stays... From first to fourth year, honors to the person who's just coming in, we collaborate mm. because we need each other's skills. Mm. We recognize that you can't do this on your own. True, you true, need true. someone who can take that to, can, you know what I mean? So it's very sad for me that in our industry, you know, it's, it's very individual. Mm. It's very individualized. Um, I'm looking out for my own success. You know, my brother's looking out for his own success. My sister's looking out for her own success. And it's become so competitive in that sense that we all in our own bubbles trying to just upanda for ourselves mm. as opposed to thinking bigger thinking outside of the box and going if five of us had to get together and really push something and really and and regardless of of of, 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 of tribes of, and nationalities do you know what i'm saying yeah. of where we come from what we're trying to do what we're trying to push how i'm trying to look a lot of the things in joburg right now you know and it's very sad for me but it's it's about you know what car you drive where you stay what clothes you wear mm. all of those labels all of those things that you know show that you've got money that you you, you you you've got class you've got style you've got status you know all of those kinds of things at the moment that's what's dominating our thinking and our 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 um, our, our movement mm. to the point where it, it we, we can't get together we, we we can't get together and be real and say let's collaborate and just push an idea without making money because at the moment i'm trying to make money to pay my bills mm. i'm trying to make money to push my lifestyle mm. the, the expensive place that i stay the expensive car that i drive the the the, the expensive places that i need to be mm. the mm. perception that i need to Put, to out, put there. out there just to show you know success, saying? and sometimes so even that perception is even expensive. It's very expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. And I like I'm, when I'm, you close your I, eye. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Yeah. And I and I caught myself. I'm there as well. You know mm. what I'm saying? We all caught up in that trap. Mm. So mm. because of that, it, it robs us of the opportunity, the time, to get together and just do something for the sake of doing it. I want to put you on the spot. You permit me. It's got yes. after one show. And one of the motto of this show is to unite, it's to innovate and also to elevate one another, mm. regardless of your tribe, your nationality, and where you come from. Um, the first question I want to ask you quickly before the second one is the fact that do you, because I want you to say it, Kati Gutka, looking at the mic, mm. I mean, looking at the camera, mm. do you believe you have the strength to collaborate? I believe I have the strength to collaborate. Now, with that being said, I want you now to look at your camera, I think, which is this one. Yeah. Yes. And call for your comrade. It is high time we collaborate. It is high time we we create a world that, for lack of better word, the powers that be. I don't want to mention them because obviously <laughs> they still they still put. Yeah. The you know where I'm coming from. Yes, uh, let's yes, not look yes, for yes, trouble. Yes. Let's be political yes, now. Yes, 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 but yes, the powers yes. that be that place this industry, we mm. should come now and begin to make them understand that it is time 
for us to collaborate. I want you to call your fellow comrade. Yeah. Guys, you know, I remember a time when I was studying in theater where it was so easy. Mm. It was so easy to grab a friend, grab two, three, four, five friends. And in between classes, after classes, we hang out. We create scripts. We create plays. We create stories. We talk about our stories. I want to go back to those times desperately. I am willing. I am able. I know we've got a lot of responsibilities. Mm. I know we've got a lot of things that we're taking care of. We've got our brands, our images, our careers that we want to. But if we cannot get together as a group mm. and start creating our own work for, the, for ourselves, for our own sanity, for our own to be able to just function mm. as people, as actors, as artists, we are going to die slow deaths. We are going to give away our power. Mm. Mm. And powerful. we are very powerful mm -hmm. as we are. All the work comes from us. All the ideas come from us, our minds, our bodies. And I'm just saying, let's take our power back. Mm. Mm. Let's mm. take it back. Let's own the narrative. Let's control the narrative the best way that we can. But it's only going to happen if we come together and collaborate. I'm happy you say so. When you look at your fellow industries, for example, I'm going to bring in the Nigerian side of things because mm. the Nigerian, the Ghanaians, the Kenyans, and you see how collaboratively these guys are. Mm. What goes through your mind? I'm, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm impressed. Um, I want to be like that. Mm. I want us to forget about, you know, yeah, forget about you know the things that control us, you know, and just take control. Because mm. that for me is a sim it symbolizes taking control. True, true. When you take control of your time, your energy, your resources, where you're gonna put your ideas. No one's telling you ideas, and then you are the one following. No, you coming up with ideas. I don't know why 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 I just love you. Maybe because I've always thought you're Nigeria. <laughs> Until Timisho Masha just <laughs> bust the bubble for me. Yes, yeah. If you were to be invited now to relocate to, I, I don't know, go to your country back, because your country is Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to be invited to come to Nigeria for you to enter into the entertainment world and do your thing, yeah. are you available? Absolutely. Tell them. I am available <laughs> to go to Nigeria now. To go to Nigeria? <laughs> You know, speak, the broken, <laughs> speak the broken part. The reason why I'm, I'm saying that is because it's high time where we begin to see. I was saying to my wife and I, we have this very particular project we're working on where we want to we want to produce content that is South African, Nigerian, Ghana, Kenya, mm. and yet it's just one movie. And except if you go and type Nathaniel and you find that he's South Africa, you will not know because it's just an African movie. Case closed. Right. Right, right, and so for right. me, those, those are the things where um, when I get celebrities like your kind to sit there and I'm saying to them, please, can we be able to encourage one another to say it's time for us to just step out? Absolutely. To just step out and not just sit down and believe that all that is greener is what we see here. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people, I said, they said the grass is greener the other side. I said, the question is the fact that how well do you know the other side? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you may just be having a perception until That's you it. enter into that very particular space to see how that is final question on this very particular segment before we go into the second one is this have there been a point in your life where you feel like giving up on this industry absolutely and where was the pivotal moment for you what happened yo um it was in 2016 mm. um yeah things were just i had a, I had 2016 a, okay yeah because you know there's these years that that came in which is 2019 i mean that, i mean 20 this covid issue oh yes. so anytime i hear people call me the first that comes to pre -COVID, is covid, pre -COVID. <laughs> okay 2016 was, yeah before covid um yeah man things were just not going well um i had a family um that i had to support and um just Things were not going well for me um, job-wise. Okay. And I just felt that I couldn't support my family through acting. And I decided to leave. I, I left Joburg. I went back to Venda. Okay. And uh, the plan was to start a takeaway chicken business um, company. Mm. And but, but God, and this is where I heard God um, in my career. Okay. As soon as I 
landed in Venda. Mm. As soon as we arrived in Venda, I had um, uh, a job, an acting job, um, corporate theatre mm. for BMW, and yeah, and that was it. That was it. And I never, I was working so much that I never even got to start the the takeaway chicken business company. Oh, wow. And I felt, and, and, and I heard, in, when that happened, I heard God say to me that, trust me. Mm. Um, and also, it was also a, an exercise for me to let go and let God. True, true. Because I think up until that point, I was controlling, I, I, I wanted to control everything. Mm. I wanted, I, I wanted to, how can I say, you know, you stress you about be, auditions. Yeah. You, 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 you stop doing this because you're so focused on acting mm. and, and mm. acting being everything that you, you stop other things in your life happening. Mm. Mm. And as soon as I did that, I realized that, you know what, when it comes to my acting, when it comes to my career, I need to give it to God. Mm. and focus on other things mm. do mm. other things in my life push other avenues in my life and the acting God we'll just get God into it alright family I think on the second segment we'll be talking I'm happy that he's a fate man and so we'll come back on the second segment and talk all things about his faith, how he managed to interwove his faith into his career and as a strong ball but at the same time also on that very particular segment we want to hear him give us his own African point of view as to what is happening in our continent because we also need to understand that behind this very particular man sitting here currently he also is very involved of what is happening in this continent we'll be right back just now don't go anywhere this is still your everyone show like subscribe tell your friends let everyone know that you are on the everyone show and currently now we have Nathaniel who is still talking go get your coffee because we'll be right back after this short break all right, family, we are back again on the second segment of the show, which is going to be all things fate and um, his African view. Um, before we begin, I like asking people this question. It sounds funny. SMD, which one are you? Just guess. Oh, wait, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, who, wait, hey, 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 hey. Don't put me in trouble. <laughs> okay, I, I like your who, wait. I, I think because it's a game, I feel like you should just choose before I tell you what it means. <laughs> oh. SMD, which one are you? <laughs> it's not a motor it's not where they it's not the place they buy what's it called second hand cars because there's this place called second hand car where they call SMD SMD which one are you S you are S no which one I'm asking are you S M or D <laughs> like my show is thinking what the hell is that the tango you didn't watch other people's shows so that's why you didn't know this question and please all of you celebrities don't watch um, this part eh? so just try and guess I am M you are M mm. wow so okay, S means single, M means married, D means divorce. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so you said you are M. <laughs> so is, is that M. correct? That is correct. So you see, he's right. Wow! Wow! <laughs> SMD. I'm so single. happy I chose the right one. <laughs> Your wife will be like, Yo! Ah, I like you. Yes, it's in him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So since it's X M D now. How did you manage to interwove your faith? Because we were saying before we went on a break, um, how you wanted to go back to Venda and mm. God, God, for lack of a better word, God caught you along the way yes. and says, trust me. How did you carry your faith and put it in your business mm. or in your career? What were the transitional process that was happening in your mind for you to get to that spot? Because not everybody has that grace to bring their faith. They'll tell you, okay, God, stay here. Mm. <laughs> uh, I will see you on Sunday or I'll see you on, <laughs> on Wednesday, dependent mm. on whatever faith that you practice and stuff. So how did you manage to mm. interwove that? For me, God has been, you know, since, so before I got married, I wasn't that um, committed, let me say, to, to my faith. Okay. Um, but it's when I started, when I got married and we started having a family, mm. that's when it came together for me mm. in the sense that um, I, I wanted to leave behind a certain lifestyle and I wanted to change certain things and focus my life on God mm. and on, on my religion and Jesus Christ. Mm. And, um, and it, was, it was hard at the beginning because acting, acting challenges you in, in all aspects okay. of, of your beliefs or your faith. Okay. Well, because, you know, you know, there are all kinds of devils in the industry. Do you know what I mean? Even all kinds of God also is there. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's going to challenge you. It's going to challenge your, your you know, you're going to, the, the kind of roles that you're going to play, the kind of things that you're going to be required um, to act in or okay. to do while you act. 
um, and even that perception of of actors, you know, like the rock star mentality, you know, party lifestyle. Mm, um, mm. It's women. It's sometimes it's 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 drugs. It's booze. It's all those things. Unfortunately, they 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 they're, they're associated with 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 the industry and with the lifestyle. Um, so it's it's going to challenge you. But I found that when I brought God in and when I decided to commit fully to... to, to but I think I'm, I'm trying to get the breaking point for you to bring God into the space. Was, was having a family. Okay. Because I needed to be responsible. I knew that I need to focus. Um, I can't... Having a family, I need to be responsible. I need to be on my game. Mm. And God is going to help me have that focus. And in fact, what it brought to me was a discipline. Okay. To my acting. Okay. Because suddenly I, you know, I stopped drinking, I stopped partying, I stopped all of those things. I, I, I focused and, and, and I'm, I'm not against alcohol. You no, know no, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. But for me, those it's just things, your own personal me, journey. Yeah, that mm. was my personal journey. For me, those things were a distraction. Okay. And they were causing me pain. So I needed to let go of those things. And as soon as I let go and I focused on God, I brought a discipline and I finally started enjoying my career. Oh. I actually enjoyed acting. I saw the benefits of, of what I can do with acting and how I can actually just completely now actually immerse myself mm. in my career. And there was more freedom because okay. there was nothing holding me back. Mm. Mm. I had the freedom to now just... And wow, time to eat. And do and please. And, and God doesn't judge. Obviously, obviously. obviously. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that's mm. what I learned. I, and I, getting to know God, getting to know Jesus Christ, I realized that... This is my calling. Acting is my calling. It's mm. not a mistake. Mm. It's something that was planned, that mm. God knows about, that he wants me in and wants me to flourish and completely succeed in it. Mm. Um, however, I do need to give it to him. True. And I do need to be completely free with it and allow myself to, 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 I think, to I think grow the, and be. Yeah. The, the thing that is popping in my head, and I see a lot of actors um, who are Christians, and I want to mention names because mm. I, I still need to protect them also. But obviously in your industry, you would have found one or two of them. Where because they find themselves with this Jesus talk, um, being, being a God-centered person, mm. there are some certain role they then tell themselves that they don't want to play because I know I don't want to do this because yes. it's going to be against my fate and stuff. How do you balance yourself with those very particular narratives where there are some certain rules? Are you part of that or you just believe that if it comes, this is a job I'm doing, it's totally different from my faith and stuff. How, how do you just position that very particular mindset? It's a very, you know what, you bring up, it's very tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Okay. It's very, very tough. Um, but I think that's where you need to know God for yourself. Okay. Okay. And, and what's your journey with God? Mm. I think. Mm. I think it's all personal. I think it's very specific to you, the person. Mm. Uh, personally, I believe I got to make money. I hear you. I, I, God blessed me with this talent. Mm. I'm very good at it. Mm. Why then would I have the burden of not being able to fulfill that talent if it's something that God blessed me with? The discipline for me mm. is to be able to separate myself as an actor and as net. <laughs> no, I just, I, 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 I just need you to say because I don't want you to look as if okay, I, I. <laughs> okay, no, you know carry saying? on, carry on. Yes, so sir. that's that's then my responsibility. What I do must not then infiltrate and infect that. Mm. So mm. I can be a rapist. Mm. I can perform it and convince people that you are a rapist. that I'm a rapist and I'll do it and I'll do the things. But when I come home, I am Ned, the husband. The father, the Jesus boy, the Jesus boy, <laughs> <laughs> to my people. Yeah, and that's and that, and and you you bring up something so important, and I think we confuse those things, mm. and we forget sometimes as actors that it's actually just a job. It's, mm, mm, it's not mm. me. <laughs> you know, I think I, I like what you are saying. That that's that's me because sometimes people mm. just believe that because we're show host, we shouldn't have opinion and stuff. And I'm like, hey guys, calm down. I have brain. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to make me just because I'm a show host now my opinion I'm like yo my opinion <laughs> matters forget it <laughs> there are other believers currently now that are in this space of entertainment where you are yes and they are struggling for them to understand that this is a job it's a job and I need you to use your camera to preach to make them understand 
And when I mean the preaching part, because I promise you, many of them, and we are getting that very particular information. My wife works in the entertainment industry, like I said to you. She works for Generation and all of that. Yes. And also writes for different uh, multi court organizations. One of the big things that they struggle that I've come to understand is the fact that there are some certain characters who they want to be able to give this Christian so-called person roles, but they just tell themselves that I'm not going to kiss, for instance, or I'm not going to hug a guy. I'm like, you are going to be poor, eh? you'll be <laughs> poor like a musk rat. Because <laughs> people exactly. like saying that uh, you, you are poor like a church rat. I'm like, no, the church is not poor. There is only mm. communion there. There is wafer. There is bread. <laughs> so, <it's good. laughs> the church is not poor. There is bread. There is offering. So there is money that they can even eat. So, exactly. How do you tell your fellow comrade who are of the same faith Yo. like you, but now mm. they are struggling to understand that this is a job. This is a job. And you just have to come out from that very particular bubble. If we have to be able to get into, like the Bible says, um, permit me to bring the Bible now, mm. where he says that, that the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the righteous. But if we, the righteous, are not going to play and operate in the place where the sinners are operating in court, how, how will the wealth transfer to us, the righteous? How do we do it? That's your mic. That's your camera. <laughs> um, guys, yeah. Basically, I need, to, I need to support my family. I need to... My kids need to go to good schools. They need to be able to feel like as their father, I'm doing everything in my power to take care of them. Mm. By not doing certain things because of my beliefs, and especially because in, in, in using God or using Jesus to, 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 to not further or to not progress in my life, my kids are watching me. How do I convince my children to believe in the same God, in the same Jesus, that is limiting their progression in life. Mm. That's a deep one. That's a deep one. The only thing that they will remember is that my father didn't work or didn't make money because of this God or because Yo. of this Jesus. You know, that's a deep one. You're taking it deeper. <laughs> <laughs> so let's flourish in our talents. They are God given, they are from heaven itself. Wow. All we need to do is master ourselves, master the profession, master who we are, so that we separate ourselves from what we do and not confuse the two. That's it. Do you believe that because we are faith-based people, we somehow exclude ourselves of the possibility of what God wants to do with us in the world? Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. And, 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 and how do we then begin to help the people understand that just because you are faith-based does not mean that God has taken you out of the world? How do we begin to conscientize the minds of those people? We need to be comfortable with the fact that we're human. Okay. Um, and that... So, 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 so being faith-based doesn't mean you won't be challenged. Okay. And I think sometimes we struggle with that. We mm. struggle with the idea of being perfect. Mm. Of now because I'm preaching Jesus, because I'm preaching God, it means that now everything I do must be pure mm. or must be you know, clean, mm. whatever mm. clean means. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we forget we are sinners, mm. first and foremost. Mm. You know, that's, that's, we, we, we can't remove that. We can't right? remove that. Yeah. The only person that's perfect was Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's the only perfect being mm. that walked this earth. However, you, my friend, are riddled with faults. Mm. But now I don't judge you according to your faults, I judge you according to how you try and operate within those faults. Mm. Mm. When you fall, will you be able to stand up again? How do you navigate the standing up back? You just keep on moving. Mm. Mm. And I think we, we harden ourselves. Mm. True. We don't, we, you know, we, we, we want to forgive others. We're quick to forgive others, but we don't, we're not quick to forgive ourselves. And I think if we are more forgiving of ourselves and more understanding of who we are and the fact that we're not perfect, no mm. one's here to be perfect. Which, I think marriage, marriage mm. taught me that part. Uh, I, I used to be very hard on myself, very hard to the point that um, I, I look at the camera to say that I was a people's pleaser. Yes. Where I, I just want to be on the good book of everybody until I met my wife. My wife is South Africa. I'm she's from Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. And she made me to understand, like, dude, nee, you will kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll die. <laughs> you'll kill yourself, right? And you'll kill yourself you'll very die. fast. And so until I begin to embrace that very particular truth and narrative she was beginning to bring for myself, I never found peace for the longest time of my life. And I tell people, I said, see, there's something that marriage would just do. Like you said, mm. marriage made you <laughs> to, to, to grab God quickly. Like, hey, Baba, I need you. <laughs> 
So for me, I think for me that mm. God factor has always been there, but marriage just make me to begin to see the other perspective coming from, for lack of better, from a female side. Yes. Who is making me to understand that? See, dude. You can't be hundred percent people's pleaser. You can't be hundred percent perfect. You will make mistake. Even the Bible says that you shall fall seven times and you shall rise up again, and all of that. Exactly. I say all of this for me because I want to tell you thank you for being authentic with your faith. Thank you. Thank you for just being who you are in terms of not allowing your faith and not allowing, for the lack of a better word, the Jesus you carry, for you not experiencing what that same Jesus has created. Because sometimes we carry this Jesus so much to the point that we don't even experience what he has created. Yes. And therefore, I say Psalm 24 verse 1, make us to understand, it says, the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. It says, the habitat and everything that belongs in it. It says, it is of the Lord. And if the Lord has given it to us, mm. oh boy, why are you not enjoy him? Can you imagine? I'm even speaking broken. <laughs> <laughs> he goes like, Mama, I see you are in Nigeria. So you can't blame me. <laughs> but with all of that being said, one more time, mm. thank you. Thank you for standing authentic. Thank you for being, even with all of the ups and downs, you still managed to navigate. Mm. To switch the ball game quickly um, in, in this very particular segment. <clears throat> when you look at what is happening in Africa as a, as a whole first, before mm. I begin to bring them into different segment, what comes to your mind? What is the thing that <sighs> boils you up, make you excited, gives you pain? Then from there, I'll begin to bring the layers down. When you look <clears throat> at just us as Africans, Oh, sorry. <coughs> um, I love Africa. I love us as Africans. The one thing that bothers me is that we're not um, together. Okay. Um, I hate, yeah, we, 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 I feel like the West, the colonizers, um, they really did their job in terms of, <laughs> no, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> they really did their job. They really <laughs> did. They, they, they separated. They divided us. Mm. They divided us. And and until and to this day, we're still divided. Um, as Africans, we're rich. We have so much color. We have so much to bring. We are so humble. We are so hardworking. We're so determined. We, we're so passionate. Mm. We are lovers. Mm. You know, the, the one thing that leads us is, is is goodness in in everything and we seek goodness i mean if you think of all that has happened to us but we don't have a bone of revenge in our body mm, true true not true. no one in the continent has ever thought <laughs> for the last 500 years 400 years 500 we, years going we yeah. were we were we've been taken advantage of We've been persecuted, we've been colonized, we've been raped, we've been pillaged, we've had all kinds of atrocities occur to us. Let us now use this time to get back what's ours and, and, and take that number one position, that higher status, not once. Mm. There are no Africans who have formed groups that are hunting white people to, 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 to shoot them down mm. Mm. or to, 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 to hurt them. In any kind of way. But don't you think, and hear me, it's not because, family hear me, we're having conversations. <laughs> mm. Don't you think that because of we've not been able to get to the point where we're like, okay, enough is enough. And that is why they are still, like you said, the Western influence mm. is still perpetrating. True, yes. Um, I would say, yeah, that is true. Um, but I see, that as a, I see that as a strength. Okay. I see that as a good quality um, in the sense that it would not serve us to be revengeful. It would not serve us to want to do what has been done to us, to others. Okay. Um, because for me, those are qualities of a... Th th that's a backward thinking person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. You know, that's a Agreed. negative person. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I'm trying to... I, I just think what we need to do is come together. That's where, that's where for me, we let ourselves down. Okay. Is the, and like the thing, what you're saying is actors. Mm. We're not united. If we could unite, we'd be a powerful force. Mm. But yeah, we still need to... At, at, at the moment when you look at... I like the fact that we talk about Western influence and stuff. Mm. What do you think that we can, from your own standpoint, mm. and you, you own your rights to your opinions and stuff, and nobody's going to come and castigate you based on that. Mm -hmm. What do you think we need to begin to do as Africans to begin to take off the Western influence or the Western powers or whatever forces that is making us to feel as if we are puppets. Hmm. What do you think we can do from, from, from your own view, your own point? Okay, mm. this is me, this is my right, this is my thought. 
I think take pride if we we haven't we haven't you know we, we, we we're good at boasting Africans. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just boast. What, what, what is that action to the boast? Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. We, we, we're good at, at, at showing up, you know, and, and showing force. But um, it's, it's always that thing that when, when a white person comes up or when we go to Europe or when we go to America, we, we, we're not as good at defending ourselves. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, and I think for me, it's just it's just that thing of taking pride in who we are. That in those spaces, in those small intimate spaces where we need to push our ideas or stand up for ourselves, mm. that's where it matters. One question I throw to everybody, and I'm also going to throw it to you: Do you believe that we we'll ever get to a point where, as Africans, the borders that we're currently seeing that has been erected in our mind? Mm. Because that's what I believe. Mm. That's what I believe mm. will ever fall. Yeah. <laughs> I know you were not expecting. It's not on the memoir I said. You don't worry. <laughs> and you were not the question was not sent to you. You know, I look at my kids, I look at my kids and I have a lot of hope. With your kids. Yeah. I think that generation for me um they they represent the potential for maybe that to happen. Because they're born in a world, you know, we, we, were, we were born in a world where, where, where you saw whiteness as greatness. Okay. And I think that still defeats us okay. psychologically in that we, 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 our generation and the guys who came before us, we haven't learned, we haven't unlearned those things to, to necessarily take whiteness, Europe, Western world, you know, knife, fork, all these things that they've created mm. and, 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 and leave them as just things. Whereas our kids, I think, of, are, are, are growing up in a world where they're seeing black, the images of black people in are power. coming out the most. Yeah. yeah. You know, superior. Blackness is great. But it's, it's something that we can work towards. Okay. It's something that's achievable. You know, they're seeing black people do great things. Mm. You know, your Serena Williams, your... Tiger Woods, um, your Sia Kulisi. Your Sia Kulisi. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? A black, you know, a black captain in a team, mm. you know. So those things are normalized for them. Okay. And I think the more they um, consume that kind of, 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 of narrative mm. out there in the world, it's going to be normal so that they're going to naturally take away those borders. It's, 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 it's not going to be a, a, a battle for them. It's a, it, it, they might not even see it as something to even, you know what I'm saying, like a, a challenge. They will, naturally, they will just want to, co to collaborate with people from somewhere else because they're going to see what's good about that person mm. from the onset. So for we, our generation, we'll still struggle within. I call it, I think sometimes I like saying to my wife, I say we, our generation, we are like the born confused. Mm -hmm. I tell people, I said, there is the born tide, which is our parents who experience apartheid and all of that. Mm -hmm. There's the born confused our type, yeah. whereby we are tied between, like you said, we're tied between our parent and yes. we have children. Like, okay, brah, that's too free. <laughs> <laughs> that's too free. Exactly. Like, no. Then you look at your parents, they're like, okay, mm, I, could, I could feel your pain. Yes. But what can we begin to do? Because this is one of the things, before um, this very particular break is over, this is one of the things, African Free Trade, um, what you call summit, I think I've, I used to forget that thing, mm -hmm. says that in 2063, Africa will have free movement of persons within the country. Mm. And I tell people, I say 2063 from now, this is 2023, that is 40 years. Mm. Add 40 years to your current age now. Mm. Do you think that even 2063 is possible? I think so. And do you think it's going to be in your lifetime? Looking at the leaders that are I sitting there currently leaders. now. <laughs> <laughs> that is the easy day. Yeah. I feel like, you have a leaders. <laughs> Our leaders, we, you know, the thing is, we need more people from our generation taking those spots. You know, mm. I think that's what we need to do. Yeah, um, because we, it, it's possible, but we need to do the work. <laughs> and how do we get the people to do the work? Well, how do we get ourselves? We, we, we need to do the. We, we need to have more conversations. You need. We need what you're doing. This mm. podcast, having conversations like these. Um, getting this kind of information out there, getting mm. inviting people who will promote and share these kinds of ideas. Um, we're doing it, mm. you know, we're trying. Mm. And I think we just need to carry on in that vein and 
obviously we're having children and those children you know we're sharing these ideas with them we're bringing up them up in this kind of way the way where they, they 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 will be you know um alert or aware of these kinds of ideas so so we're doing it i think we're doing it and i think it's just a case of we mustn't get tired okay and do you think our leaders currently and hear me you can put it from a standpoint <laughs> Do you think our leaders currently that we have up there, they are helping matters? <laughs> <laughs> leaders, do you see what you are causing to us? Leaders, this is what you are causing. Leaders, you know Shem. <laughs> no, my South Africa start with Shem. It's a lot of good. Job. <laughs> Not <laughs> much good is gonna come from that. <laughs> Part of me does, you know, I don't, I, I understand our leaders, where they come from, you know. Help us, because you understand, we don't understand. So can you help no, us? No, I mean, I want, I want to understand, you know, I want, I want, you know, let me put it this way. Okay. I want to believe that it's not their fault necessarily or 100%. That they were born or they were made in a particular time. Are you a politician? <laughs> Because I'm, I'm, I'm sensing a political talk now. All of a sudden, guys, you notice that yeah, when it gets to this part, changed. there's a political voice that is coming out it's now. <laughs> I feel like asking you which of the party do you belong to now? Because <laughs> as, as a political statement now, you are trying to be, I, 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 don't be a politician uh, on my show. It's called everyone show. It's not, it's not everyone party. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, our leaders. I can't say anything. All I can say is just that our <laughs> leaders, our leaders, they've got a lot of work to do. They've got a lot of self, um, what is the word? <laughs> self-assessment. They need to do a lot of self-assessing. All right, family, I think I want to go on a break this time so that I can, I can take his talk because he's about to get heated now. And uh, <laughs> so that he can be able to remove the political side because I know you look as if he's a politician. <laughs> so I need to remove that political side. And so the last 10 minutes that we have left and stuff after this very particular break, we just want to talk all things our leaders and also to see how we can bring out the, leaders, the leadership in us, mm. this generation, so that we can be able to give something to our next generation. Why you are thinking about that? Mm. with the whole issue of leaders do you think that also added to the thought that that's what i'll start from when i come back from break mm -hmm. that we have leaders who are currently willing to hand over baton of leadership to our generations it's a question that you don't think we'll be right back just now he's already shaking his head <laughs> <laughs> i'll see you just now <laughs> And that's how we are back again on this very particular third segment of the show. <laughs> <laughs> in case of you are thinking what is happening, we're back. Right. The question I ask in terms of the batons of our leaders, mm -hmm. do you think that our leaders are currently crafting a new narratives where we as the young generation will be able to successfully transfer the baton to us? Because <sighs> they keep telling you, I don't know if you've heard that narrative, the future of this country belongs to the youth. <laughs> And you're wondering, the minister of youth is literally <laughs> 82 years old. And I'm trying to understand how does the future belongs to us. What do you want to say regarding to that? Yeah, I think, I think our leaders need to have an honest conversation with themselves. Um, and ask themselves, you know, where, what, what legacy do they want to leave behind? Um, unfortunately, yeah, right now, I, I can't see it, you know. I can't. I I I don't necess, I I don't know what kind what kind of future they envision for this country. Okay. If 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 us as the youth are not very involved with what is happening right now. When you look, come next year by this time, it's going to be election again. Mm. Do you think from our generations with the youth that we still have that energy that we want to get involved in the political system of this country or? What will be will be. Um, I'm I'm seeing some young guys come up um, outside of let's say like the ruling party. Okay. Um, and I think yeah, you know, I think I think maybe our problem as the youth sometimes is that we're too respectful of our elders. <laughs> and so we we're still loyal to them somehow. Yeah, you know, I think that's what's that's what's maybe stopping a, the radical change that's 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 required. Is that they, they brought us up too well. <laughs> <laughs> to the detriment of... <laughs> to, 
to our own detriment because yeah, yeah. because yeah because absolutely no a radical change is needed man mm. a radical change is needed um but when we talk about because this statement of radical change and stuff we, we are, guys we're not political i'm not i don't belong to any political party mm. so this is not a political party show and stuff um every party that in which we support is are so private information and so it's not going to be out there so please pardon us on that but we hear parties like economic freedom fighter is it freedom fighting or freedom fighter they call them eff mm -hmm. we hear parties like action essay we hear parties like radical transformation radical mm -hmm. economic mm -hmm. movement even mm -hmm. the anc also they also mm -hmm. say about radical stuff do we really understand that statement called radical hey you know i don't think we do personally you know um because there's so many factors at play. You know, when you think about freedom, when you think about freedom of movement, freedom of expression, how to, you know, even as an actor, you know, I don't think there's, and I'm saying, I'm talking about my, my profession. Um, the things that I need to operate at my best, and you think, you know, it's the same people who are saying radical, economic, what, what. There's so many things that are holding me back right now as we're speaking okay you know I, I, there, there's so many do's and don'ts I, I'm, I'm not allowed to say this i'm not allowed to say but you like you think to yourself i could be making money if i could say this mm. but then how do you say you want me to be radically free <laughs> and yet but i'm radically same, constrained <laughs> Radically free, but yet do you know what I'm somewhere saying? around the book is radically constrained. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And 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 I think we we don't understand what we want and how to get what we want. And especially for me, like the people who are making policy and the people who are making the rules, they don't ha they don't have a full grasp of what it is that we need and what and and mm. what what it is that's, that's actually an, holding that's an us back. That's an important angle you're going into. Mm. So which means our policies maker they don't they, they don't live in the reality. Not in my reality. I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're. Gosh, I feel like I'm. I'm taking. I'm telling guys, forgive me. Yeah. Anyway, I'm being too honest. I can't help. I can't help it. You're being too honest. <laughs> oh, it's tough. You see, the, but the fact that it's the fact that it's hard to have an honest conversation mm. without worrying about who is going to affect and how it's going to affect my bread at true, the end of the day. True. I'm a kind of a. You know what I'm saying? Like. What world are we living in? You know what I mean? Like I think for the first time as as my guest, you <laughs> I'm beginning to feel the constraints somehow, especially with you celebrities in your world, how Yeah. They say we are free, but somehow it looks as if we are franchised. So the question there is, which I'm going to direct to you, are we really free or we're just franchised? Yeah, we're franchised, my boss. You know, um, we don't want to admit it. We don't want to say it. I mean, there's actors that I know that have been blacklisted for 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 speaking out. Wow. We 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 know. You know, there's actors that 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 are not working simply because they are too honest. Damn it. And now you ask yourself. Ah. So so where's the freedom of communication then? You know. Family. Are, we, are we protected? <laughs> how, how protected are we? How safe are we? Because you, know you never can tell if somebody is just going to pick one thing from you and all of a sudden all doors are closed. Now, I, I feel like, Tristan, do you think or do you feel that somehow these things also come from your fellow blacks or is the other side of our colors? Yeah. Hey, Darlington. <laughs> <laughs> My name is called already. <laughs> <laughs> the way he said he looks as if I don't even know my name. Hey, Darlington, what's the Marakanda? What's your problem? Come, come to you. <laughs> I still need to live after this. <laughs> but but I hear you. I hear yeah, you. And yeah, I, I'm yeah. going to respect that side. Within us as blacks, do you think that we we really love ourselves and we care for one another, or we just playing games to survive? And if I have to step on you for me to move to the next, I'll do that. That's what it feels like, bro. Mm. That's on you know, if I if I'm if I'm, if I'm being honest, yeah, it, it feels like that. It feels like we're not we don't care for each other, you know, the way that we should. Um that we are quick to to step on each other to try and progress and move to the top. Um Yeah, and it's devastating. Is it not because the pie for us the black is too small? That's why that is happening or it's just individual 
personality. Yeah, I think we've, we 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 fighting for the pieces pieces in the pie, and the pie isn't big enough. Okay, it's not big enough. But I think what we need to realize is that it's up to us to make it bigger. Okay, we okay. need to be less consumers and more producers. Mm. Black people's problem. Yeah, <laughs> and if we consuming. understand, yeah, and we 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 quick to run to trends, you know, to to the new thing that's in. Not realizing that we are not the ones creating that thing, mm. or we, or we, not that, not we, we are. We have obviously, the, the, we, we do more. We're so not influenced. Inf we, we don't influence those very particular space because when I look at some certain things that is currently happening in our continent, for example, the advent of your Twitter, even currently now with the shows we're doing, which is on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. Which African owns those very particular mm. platform? Mm. Because these are honest conversations that the African show want us to start having. So that by the time somebody of our generations or the young generations who's going to watch this will be like, okay, come, what do we really own? Yeah. What do we really own? As a closing message, because obviously I really appreciate your honesty and some of the, I, to the point that my name has been called like 50 <laughs> times on the show. I've never seen a guest who mentioned my name <laughs> so many times. And uh, no, you are a politician. In case, let me just say that in case if you're ever planning to be a politician, really? going to politics, please go ahead. You will succeed. <laughs> oh, Shem, you have all the political statement. <laughs> you, you will be a very good policymaker. But I really want to thank you. But before we close the show, what is the yeah. message you want to pass, send across to our generation? Mm. Um, I think I'm going to make it at three generations. The message you want to send to generations at the top, mm. our generation, and your children's generation as a closing message. You know, I, I work a lot with the youth, like with young people in high school who are, what, like 16, 17. Okay. Now, you know, I'm 40 years old. And I get so much inspiration from watching them. They're fearless. Okay. They are so fearless. They are ready to interrogate. They are ready to investigate. They are ready to challenge. Well, those people can ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? This people can ask questions. They, and, and you know what I'm saying? They're not trying to please anybody. Yeah. They're not trying to mind their cues or their T's. They, <laughs> they, they're just looking for life. Mm. You know? Mm. They've been given life and they want to live life. And that's what I want to encourage us. Generation previous, generation now. Let's learn from these young guys. They're fearless. Mm. And, and, and if we can adopt that spirit of fearlessness, I think we'll go a long way to make our dreams and our realities what they want to be, what we want them to be. If there's a country you want to go work with in your career, mm. okay, that was quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy for the question. <laughs> I like the question. You like the question? Okay, what country is that? <laughs> <sighs> I'd love to operate Nigeria, Ghana, West Africa for me. West Africa for you? Yeah. Look at your camera, I don't even know if you're on us. <laughs> but you know where your camera is. And and call those countries' producers. And hear me, they will call. Call them and let them know that. And I think that's a question I also ask celebrities when I meet them. Do you have a passport? <laughs> you know? It's I was, say, I was saying that to him off air. So he was like, I'm like, yeah, I asked him because I know yes. I know power that also watch me. Yes. Like, hey, do they have passport? So he said his passport is ready. So which means it can be stamped anytime. Anytime, Any, even now. Even, <laughs> even now. <laughs> I like your generation, my dear. <laughs> so now look at the camera and call yes. those countries and their producers and let them know that you're ready to work. My brothers in Nigeria, my brothers in Ghana, my brothers in all over Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe, wherever you are, I'm here, I am ready. Like I said, my passport can be stamped today. Let's work together. Let's create magic. Let's control the narrative that is out there and make it ours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nat. I really appreciate you, man, you for welcome. coming. I know that yes, the drive was like as if you're traveling to Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> All of you keep saying that it's fine. It's, it's your good. country. Yes. <laughs> but I really want to appreciate your family. If you have any questions you want to ask, please use the email that is right there. And for those of you who would want to bring him uh, to the country he's mentioned, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, I think I remember those three countries he says, please and please, you can definitely reach out to the email that you're currently seeing on the screen and we would definitely try as much as possible to speak with his management, obviously. Uh, he's a celeb. You need to just put his name on Google and see he's a celeb. Look at the name that is on the screen type it is a celeb so um definitely we'll try our possible best for us to help you facilitate in case if you can't get hold of him directly how can people find you 
Uh, Instagram and Facebook and my email netramabrana at gmail.com which one which one you communicate most mostly with? Instagram Instagram so guys take advantage of his Instagram I think that's all I can say but as you're using Instagram if you know that he's taking time to respond you can definitely use the email that is available on the screen Absolutely. and we'll try as much as possible to help you get him one more time thank you thank you for embodying for 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 carrying Africa um, like I said to you, the first time I come in contact with you was your show that you did where you were a Nigerian person. And I remember, yo, Ooh, Jesus, oh, sorry, sorry, I remember that very particular show where um, I cried because it was a reality I was facing those years. Right. And you really carried it to the point that for the longest of time, I thought that you were in Nigeria. Yeah. And thank you for just being authentic to you in the industry. I know the industry would have given you your fair share of disappointment, but hear me. Thank you for still continuing. Thank you for not giving up. Uh, things would have happened for you to all, almost give up, but you still put through. There are generations that are looking up to you, including myself also. We are behind the scene cheering you up to say, don't give up. This is just the beginning. God is about to open the continent for you and even the nations at large. I celebrate you. Thank you for taking out the time to be with us today. And I know that this is not going to be the last time. Yeah. By the time the political side of you come out, we'll bring you again on the political talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> With that being said, family, bye for now. And I'll see you again on the next episode. Please keep sharing. Invite your friends and your loved ones. Tell them to subscribe on the Afro One Show. This is how we do it. Bye for now. And God bless you. I remain your host, the Afropolitan Apostle, known as Darlington Steve. God bless you.